Hi guys, so today I'm going to be talking about how to treat pots naturally. So in pots, it's kind of gross, but the blood pulls into your lower extremities, so into your legs and your feet. For whatever reason, the blood doesn't circulate properly and you're not getting enough oxygenated blood to the brain. That's what makes you feel lightheaded, dizzy, can make you pass out. So then your heart rate speeds up, your heart pumps faster to try and compensate and that in itself can cause palpitations and chest pain and all of those sorts of symptoms. So to combat all of that, one really simple thing you can do is increasing your fluid, salt and electrolyte intake. So increasing the amount of water you drink is going to increase your blood volume, meaning there's more to circulate and more oxygenated blood that is eventually going to reach your brain and it's going to mean that your heart doesn't have to pump quite so fast. The salt and the electrolytes are really important because that's what's going to retain the fluid. Otherwise, you will drink the water and your body will just get rid of it again. So it's really important that you pair the water with salt and electrolytes as that's what's going to give you the lasting effects. When I was in a particularly rough patch where I was fainting quite a bit more than normal and getting injured because I was fainting into cabinets and <laughs> just going through quite a rough time. My friend sent me some of these electrolyte sachets, so I thought I would tell you a bit about those. It's by a company called Vidrate and they have the electrolytes, so that means it's going to keep my blood volume up and in turn make my pots a lot better. All you have to do is mix this with some water and then you're good to go. So what I like about these ones is that the original range has vitamin C and vitamin B12 added. Vitamin B12 is really good for fatigue. I know a lot of us have fatigue with pots. So these ones in particular are really good for overcoming some of that fatigue. They also have vitamin C as well. So that's going to boost your immune system, but also it's a natural mast cell stabiliser. So if you have any mast cell problems going on, it's also going to help with that as well. And they're also vegan as well. So something like that is going to be really helpful other things you can do is drink water in combination with a salty snack. You are going to have to make sure you keep on top of the water because on its own the salt can't really do anything. You need the water, <laughs> you need both together. Another common symptom is nausea and I suffer really badly with this. So I've been trying these gin gin sweets. It's a boiled sweet or a boiled candy that has ginger in it. Ginger is a natural antiemetic, which means it naturally helps with nausea and vomiting. And so I've been really liking these. They're really good for mid-level nausea, where it's just niggling away at you. These can really just take the edge off of it. The times I find myself reaching for these the most is when I'm too nauseous to eat, but I can feel that my blood sugar is dropping. I might find it helpful to just take one of these it just gives me a bit of sugar and stops me feeling as nauseous, so I really recommend those. Another thing you can try is these C bands. So this is a form of acupressure. It has a little ball on the inside and this presses on a pressure point and it stops you <laughs> feeling as sick. This pressure point is for nausea and vomiting and so it can really help with those symptoms. A lot of people wear these for pregnancy and travel sickness. I used to wear them for travel sickness and then <laughs> when things progressed and I found myself being nauseous all the time, I started wearing them all the time. And then if things are really bad and I need to bring out the big guns, I have this. This is an Emmaterm bracelet. It's a little TENS machine which goes on your wrist and it goes in a similar place to that nausea pressure point and it just sends a signal that goes to the nausea centre in the brain and it overrides the nausea and vomiting signals. I got mine on Amazon just because it was quite a lot cheaper there than from the main website. So this will be linked as well. I'm not sure if I said, I will be linking everything. So I'll link the electrolyte sachets, I'll link the sweets, the sea bands, and this as well. Everything will be linked in the description. Next we have compression wear. These ones are compression socks. So they go up to the knee, they constrict the blood vessels in the legs, and they help you again pump the blood back up through your body. The more compression you have, the better. So they come in different strengths. 
you can actually get some from your GP, which might be a higher strength, but at the very least, you can buy these ones online if you need to. You can also get compression leggings, and those are going to do really well because with these, you might still have some blood pooling in the top of your legs. But if you get the tights or the leggings, then you're not going to get that so much. And that's going to make you feel a lot better again because your blood can circulate, your heart isn't having to compensate and you get more oxygenated blood to the brain, which is the goal. And that's the thing that's going to make you feel better. And lastly, we have gentle exercise. Now, I know that's a scary thought if you're very unwell with POTS and you definitely do have to take it slowly and take it at your own pace. For some people, it might be doing leg raises in bed where you're just lifting your legs up and down a few times. That's going to strengthen your calf muscles and again, make them better able to pump the blood around your body. Some people find swimming really helpful. The water creates pressure and it works similarly to the compression where it constricts those blood vessels and that makes you feel better. There are also things like exercise bikes. Some people can tolerate a normal exercise bike but there's also a recumbent one. So you're a bit more horizontal and that can be a lot better for some people. You can buy them or most gyms will have them. So that's another good one, as well as Pilates. On YouTube, you could search lying down Pilates or lying down Pilates exercises, and that will give you somewhere to start. A lot of it can actually be done in bed. So especially if exercise is difficult, a bit of gentle Pilates in bed could be the place to start. Okay, so that's all of the natural things. And then we're gonna go off piste. And for the people that do want to try a medication and they just can't access it, I wanted to talk about beta blockers. So this is a medication, it does come with a few more side effects than the natural things, but I just wanted to mention it in case there's anyone that wants to try medication and they just haven't been able to for whatever reason. Beta blockers are quite easy on the body. This one is 10 milligrams, which is a very low dose. My GP actually started me on this before we even knew what the problem was. It's considered a green medication, which means any doctor can prescribe it. It's not specialized or controlled in the same way. So even if you can't see a specialist and your doctor doesn't know anything about POTS, you could still have a chat with them and ask them about beta blockers, just because a lot of doctors will be open to trying that, especially at a low dose like this. So unlike some things like Mydodrine and another one is Evabradine, which are highly controlled and they have to be prescribed by a consultant or a hospital. The beta blockers, I don't really know how to describe it because the medication is a medication at the end of the day. And I find this just as effective. The only difference is it's not as controlled. So you can have a chat with your GP and they might be happy to prescribe this. It's worth asking about if you're struggling. Okay, so that's everything. I hope there was something in here that you found helpful. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.